part of the Meuse is especially beautiful for me because it's the place where I took my beautiful Dita in my arms and had a rapport <laughs> of a particular kind, do you understand? What sort of kind? What sort of kind? Most wonderful kind. Oh no, there are no cows again. Last cow going. Now this was shit. The man who is generally credited with being the first scientist, and note that I say man, was Francis Bacon. And he lived in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. And his famous statement to the Queen was this, Madam, we shall tame the whore nature. Well, this is the whore nature. Here it is. And this is how they tame her. There's something extraordinarily important and interesting about nuclear power and nuclear energy, about the splitting of the atom, about what's going on down here. It has become a metaphor for the destiny of the human race. It goes beyond the mere technical accomplishment that man has somehow discovered the secret of nature and has torn the fabric of the universe apart in order to make energy for himself. It really says much more about the psychology of human beings than about their destiny. And it's much more interesting than the, than the technical excellence itself. I think I'm going to shorten that. Let's do it again. I just want one sentence. Okay. There's something extremely interesting about nuclear power, nuclear energy. It's something that goes beyond the mere
technical achievement of tearing apart the fabric of creation. In my opinion, and it seems to me quite clear that, that it's a, a metaphor, for, in a way, for the destiny of the human race. That is what I want to say. Right, we're going to do another another one now, okay? You ready? When you're ready. It doesn't surprise me that nuclear power stations are always built in areas of outstanding beauty. This is the nuclear power station of the Electricité de France on a loop of the river Meuse uh, at a place called Chouze. We had to climb over a wooded mountainside to get here. It's very difficult to approach from the other side of the river. But it's such a beautiful spot. And all around us is the fabric of creation. The birds are singing. Every little creature is about its urgent business. And in the background is this dreadful humming sound. The sound of nuclear electricity. That's all I need, I think. Hello. My name is Dita Rietema. And I would like to tell you a bit more about the concept of gender economy. Gender economy is a concept that, about dualities. Dualities that can liberate males and females. No, it should be right. It's totally useless life. And the, and the cloud is huge. But do it, yeah, do it. Take the tops of trees. To, take it to the blue sky. More to your left. I'm sitting in France here at the nuclear power station called Chos. Choose in English. Have we choose this to happen? Have we choose to have this energy source in our human life? That is the big question. And do we still want to continue to choose choose? The concept of gender economy has several layers of dualities. It's about femininity and masculinity, about feminism and masculism, about patriarchy and matriarchy. These dualities, if ordered rightly, can bring great joy and peace and liberate us from our traps. One of them, wrong choice of energy source.
take the power station again. So here we are at the nuclear power station in Chus, in France. It has been a very unexpected journey. I never planned to see this power station. I came here in a romantic occasion to meet Chris and to have a trip on the river. And by some unbelievable force, we happened passing by this power station. Nothing we planned. Or did we? There are things that are bigger than we understand, probably. It's all about the magnetism and force of important things in your life. And this subject is important both for me and for Chris. And somehow it got us here into this marvelous, marvelous jungle. Besides chores. In my world, nothing happens by chance. I have worked to fight the nuclear industry, and through that, to look at the whole idea of the way in which people think nowadays, human beings think nowadays. For a long time I've been thinking these things. But every move I make and every step I take, as it says in the song, I seem to be controlled. Now that isn't the quite the right word. I seem to have my path laid out before me by some force which is which has a purpose for me for me and I'm here in these woods these beautiful woods by this nuclear power station with a woman that I love and who I met in the most extraordinary circumstances and everything about the way in which we met and where we went and how we came together been something which, is, which cannot be explained by coincidence. And so what I believe is that there is some force associated with emotion and with humanity and with love which counters the other force which is associated with rational thought and mathematics and machinery and nuclear power. Yeah, it's quite an honor to be there in that force and serve it. I hope we will get it together. Get it together, because love, only love can stop this madness. It's the biggest force above all other forces on earth. And we humans, we are such loving creatures. <laughs> Only we let it go. And we let it happen. It's that bonding. And sensing it. Believing it. Trusting it. Being it. The oneness of our kind. Everybody. Everybody longs for it. We can get out from the system. We can melt it down. We can find a new way.
Love, eh? Love is what everybody wants. But what do they get? They get video games. They get mobile phones. They get machines. They get electronic devices, like this one. Gadgets. Gadgets, which, which, which do not compare in their complexity and beauty to the smallest insect. And they are sold these things for money. And this system of rational thought and money goes round and round and round and round, selling love. But of course it's not real love. It's not this love. It's false love which people pay money for and go to work to get the money to pay for this love, which isn't real love. And so this is my message. It's cut out from that system. Find somebody to love, mm -hmm. to hold. These people who run this system are frightened of this. Where earlier I said, Francis Bacon said, we will tame the whore nature. These are the men who are frightened of the softness and the beauty and the wetness and the lust and the chaos and the energy. Terrifying energy, we all admit, terrifying energy. And these men are frightened of it. So what they do is they push it away. And instead they do mathematics. Well, they have lost their souls. I hope not. I hope they haven't lost them. They just need to got to get them reawakened. They have to recharge them. They need a little flame, a little spark to wake it up. And for that, we just need to change the systems. The systems are holding everything back. It's doable, it's not hard even. It's just what do we want? How do we want to live instead of the matrix that we're trapped in? And you talked about men a lot, Chris. But I have to say that my kind, the women, are very guilty too. Women are not given to realize the system of gender powers that they possess. It's not taught in universities, it's not even written in whatsoever any books at all. It's not in films, hardly analyzed. So what is the power of women? How do you think? Is there such a thing? Of course there's such a thing. I, I myself am controlled by the power of women and always have been. And this power is very great. And this power is a power which I believe to be essentially non-linear, non-rational. It's a power of intuition. And it's extraordinarily powerful, much, much more powerful than the pathetic reasoning methods that men tend to use. So you mean that men don't have intuition? I think men don't have intuition, or if they do have it, they don't use it. They fear it. I mean, I know, I know this because I've spoken with lots and lots of nuclear engineers, nuclear scientists, radiation biologists, scientists. All my life I've talked to these people, and they fear intuition. They do not believe that intuition will give them the correct answer. And my project, my project, if I live this long, is to show this. Is to show how, how rational thought, linear rational thought, the stuff that's given us the digital watch and the mobile phone, is pathetically useless when it comes to solving real problems in the real world. And it invariably gives the wrong answer. The main wrong answer it has given us is that nuclear power is safe. And this is where I came in. This is how I discovered that these rational methods are incorrect. These rational methods 
these rational methods came about at the beginning of, the last, of this last century, around about 1900, when it was necessary to show that there was some alternative to religion to decide what was best for human beings, how to live your life. And it was used to justify the existence of rich people and poor people. It was used to try and obtain objectivity. But we now know there's no objectivity. Everybody is subjective. <laughs> do you think so? I do. I think there is objectivity. In a, in a different way probably than you meant now. But I really believe that dual aspects of the structure of dual gender order is quite an objective, easy, ma mathematically easy structure. And if feminism has this, uh, been exploring patriarchy, where nuclear stations fit in, in the negative, destructive aspects of patriarchy, in the negative, destructive aspects of masculinity. That is where nuclear stations fall in. Although, of course, they have the positive aspects and, and the power which people can find, as many can, can read as um, military industry is something positive too, something that gives them power in other countries something that gives them better prices for coal and um, diamonds, something that gives you lots of things, consumption. It doesn't give you love, Dita. But women like to consume, don't they? Well, this is also a mistake, because women want love. They want love and they want babies. That's the most important thing. That's yeah. what we want, you and I. We want love and we want babies. <laughs> and what else do we need? Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Yeah. Just but the they softness. are playing out the, the game so that women shouldn't want babies. And women shouldn't of course. want the things that are natural that's for correct. us. That's correct. That's correct. So that's how the system plays it out. So, uh, matriarchy. What is matriarchy? The most raw and frightening aspect of matriarchy is that little boys are being trapped in soldier roles to be sacrificed in wars if the need comes. and to kill the enemies who define which are defined by whom that's the big question too anyway the boys the males that we complain about discussing patriarchy they are all the little boys that were trapped in those matriarchal traps to protect women and girls and children to protect women, most of all, because women do not have that gender role. And we have to disclose this gender trap. That is the way how we get out of this military system, of the militarization of our society, of love, lack. The lack of love. It's doable. <laughs> If you start to analyze matriarchy too, not only patriarchy, if you start to understand, both women and men start to understand those traps. We can fix it. <laughs> I hope so, precious. I promise you.
trap soon, did it? <laughs> now. Oh, this is so delightful, all that green behind. And the power station there. Can I be in it? Just great, Chris. It feels so right. At last. <clears throat> I've been sitting there, you know, being myself, with all my powers, and nothing to do with them. It's just like I wrote to you in the first mail when I understood that you love me. Now I can see what I've been prepared for. All these gifts we have, all these talents, all these experiences and knowledge, deep, huge, all the strength. And now what to use it on? You came along. I don't remember what I was supposed to say. What were you supposed to do is jerk about like a puppet. Ah, yeah, that's right. You didn't do that bit. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, before your time, it was just a dolly. Just a dolly. Sitting there. Dolly without a key. Great, you got. Well, it's going to be over here. It I mean, is on the floor here. Yeah, where we've been lying and, and uh, enjoying uh, ourselves. Enjoying ourselves. Yeah, sure. So let's go away from this. Could you give me a hand, please? I don't like going down. Not good for my knees. Oh, you've got knees, have you? Okay. <laughs> okay. It's so beautiful here. Why do we choose this place when it's just full of shit? Is it better than other? So we take this. Hmm. Look at all that radioactivity coming out of it now. Look, 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 look. Chimneys pouring out of it. Yeah. Krypton 85, you know. Krypton. Hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a noble gas. Ugh. Okay. All right. This is nice. Oh, there it is. It's a nice shot. Yeah. Tritium, Krypton 85. That's what you've got there. Tritium. Tritium, yeah. Krypton? 85. Krypton 85. Strontium? No strontium. Not much. They filter that stuff. Do they? Well, it does come out. Yes, strontium. Some strontium. But the main radioactive element that you see coming out there is Krypton 85. 
and it's going up. Look at it. Up it goes. It's hot. It's really hot. Look how fast it's rising up there. They must have just vented something because something, it wasn't doing that before. They just vented something into the, into the tile. They're not supposed to do that, you know. It's not supposed to do that. They are not. No, the towers... The reason for those big towers is that they put the stuff in and it goes up very, very slowly. And that gives the time for the short-lived radioisotopes to decay. So by the time it gets to the top, it's less radioactive. If it's coming out as fast as that, then these substances don't decay. It's the substances fun. won't decay if it's coming so fast. Yeah, fast. They won't decay. That's right, so all the hot stuff is going up into the atmosphere. Such a beautiful day. Such a wonderful On the other hand, place. on the other hand, it's possible that that's not a nuclear power station, and it operates on burning wood, and that's the wood from the chimney, and the rest of it is just pretend. <laughs> Where are we going now, Preskins? We're going to the waterline. What? Right down to the power station. Either there or there. What do you... Well, I think if you follow the road, you're going to come out somewhere. Yeah. That's what we will do. We'll follow the road for once. This road will go to the power station, I think. No. I know where else it can go. No, but the river is behind, beside, uh, between the, us and the power station. Yeah. Is it? Yes. That's why we are so peaceful here. Oh, all this mud. I love this wood, this place. It is so gorgeous. And while we are going, all this nature, it's lovely. So I will have it on still. And we can put a lot of text later. You know? Or shall we go down there? No. I think the keep on the road is easier. The road's going down here, so it's going to come out somewhere. Or it's a bit muddy. I just think that they probably come out where there is no view. It's going to be hard to go down there anyway. Oh, 
No, this is going down. Oh, yeah. Could you film me now? And everything around. Careful move. So careful, so gentle. I like those. How do you call these? What? These. Ferns. Ferns. Fern. Yeah. Oh God! What a beautiful place this is. What a forest. There is a tree, we could climb on a tree. <clears throat> it's even not slippery, it's nice. Let's just wait. Don't don't go. No, I'm not going to. Don't shake my tree.
Ой. Here is a nice place. But here we'll be seen. Yeah, you're right. We don't want to stay here too long though, this isn't good. Alright? This isn't good. There's direct gamma radiation coming up at that point. And the mud. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's where we are here, you're getting gamma. No, maybe we can't get so far as to get the reactor. Couple in the woods. Yeah. Another couple in the woods, I would say. That's right, another couple in the woods. <laughs> and something so beautiful and complex yeah. that cannot be described by any words. Yeah. And that the scientists know nothing about, nothing at all, but would easily squash it under the heel of their boot. Yeah! Okay, we head up. Heading for the life. Heading for the life, yeah. That's what we do.
No gracias nuclear. <laughs>